I have to say, Max and Mary, it's a joy to be able to preach in my beloved United Methodist Church that now upholds my values Amen. of open hearts, open minds, and open doors. Amen. Finally, we are here to say all means all. And this is the first time I've ever gotten to preach with those values now being held by everybody. And so it's, it's a real joy to be here. Uh, I have a silly question for you. Um, have you ever felt like a frog? Now, I ask that because I was watching a, a special one night about creatures that are not beloved. Frogs being one of them. You know, they're kind of slimy. Uh, they're a little sluggish. They're kind of droopy. They really don't, you know, make anybody happy when you look at them. And I got to thinking, you know, when I feel like a frog, it's when I want to be right, but I know I'm wrong. When I feel like a frog, it's when I want to give, but there's also that little selfish part of me that's not quite ready to give enough. When I feel like a frog, I want to care, and in my heart, I'm watching all this sadness, and I want to do something, but then I drink my coffee and go back to where I was, lazy, lying on my lily pad in my house, being a little bit indifferent. That's what it's like sometimes to be a frog. Now, we all know the fairy tale. We all know the fairy tale about the handsome prince that the witch put a hex on him and he became an ugly frog. And what was needed was for a beautiful maiden to come forth and kiss him right on the lips. Now, let's face it. How many hot chicks are going to go kiss a frog, right? So the odds were absolutely against him. And yet, a little miracle happened. A beautiful maiden came along and kissed him right on the lips, and suddenly he became who he really was, a prince. He became who he had always been, but now was to be seen and be able to live as who he truly was. So I got to thinking about that story and my frogs as I was watching these slimy green characters, and I got to thinking, you know, there's, some spirit, there's a spiritual truth in that story of the frog and the prince and the maiden, and, and, the, and the truth is, I think we're called to be frog kissers. Now, I know that sounds weird, but I'm going to try and bring it home to you, okay? We are called to touch the people who God puts in our lives. We are called to love those people that we may not want to love, but those people that God puts in our lives so that we can help them become the people they really are, the people that God knows they can be. That's what a frog kisser does. They don't literally kiss they kiss from the heart and awaken who that person really is inside. So we're called to be frog kissers. Now, I want to thank St. Matthew and all of you for being frog kissers in my life. To quote the Gospel of Matthew, chapter 25, I was a stranger, and you invited me in, and you welcomed me, and you brought me into your family as if I had been here forever. It was the most endearing feeling to just know I could walk through that door and I was welcomed into that family. And now I must leave. Uh, I'm going to borrow some words from the Apostle Paul, words that have meant a lot to me, words that I take with me, words that I leave with you, and these are the words. I thank my God every time I remember you, constantly praying with joy in every one of my prayers for you because of your sharing the gospel from the first day until now. 
I am confident of this, that the God who began a good work in you will be faithful to complete it. That's from Paul's letter to the Philippians. It was a church he loved. This is a church I love that I will remember in prayer and that I want you to remember that the good work God began in you, God will bring that to completion. I am so thankful for St. Matthew, for Max, for Mary, who have touched my lives in so many ways, for all of you. I'm thankful for the beautiful times that we have worshiped together, for the times of communion that we have experienced together. I'm so thankful for the magnificent, I don't see Blake, did he disappear? Oh, there he is. I'm so thankful for the magnificent music that you all prepare for us. And of course, I can't help but talk about the food. I just ate, I don't know how many donuts just now for breakfast. We are United Methodists, right? We like our food. And so I've enjoyed that immensely. I'm thankful more than you'll ever know for your support and your prayers for me, especially through the past two years as I've experienced some health issues. Most of all, I am thankful to you, all of you, for allowing me to be me. So often it is difficult for pastors, sometimes impossible, to find a place where you can just be yourself, frog warts and all, where people love you and accept you for who you are, not for what you do. You have done that for me, St. Matthew, and that love, that friendship, that acceptance have, have had a deep and abiding impact on my life, and I will leave here changed forever. Someone wrote a card that said, some people come in and out of our lives, and they just go, and they're gone. Others come into our lives and leave footprints on our hearts, and we are changed forever. You have left footprints on my heart, and I have been forever changed. And now I have to leave this wonderful cocoon of love and acceptance. I'll be real honest, I'm not a fan of change. I don't like it. In fact, I hate change. It is just not fun. It's just not fun. And yet, we know that change is inevitable in human life. You all have experienced changes that you didn't want to go through, or maybe you did want to go through, and those were good. Change isn't always bad. It's not always good. It just is. Change is around every corner of our lives. And as I make this change from Fort Worth to Arlington to Blanco, I want you to know something. I take each of you with me into my heart, into my prayers, into my spirit. Part of God's saving grace for me as I leave is that I know you will pray for me as you have. Part of God's saving grace for me is that I know you will continue to do ministry in the name of Jesus Christ right here on Hitson Lane in East Fort Worth. You will continue that, that ministry that is so needed and that you do so well. You will continue to be the hands and feet of Christ in the world. You will continue to welcome strangers into your midst. I have no doubt that I will hear from here on out the ministry that St. Matthew is doing because that's who you are. You do ministry together in the name of Jesus Christ, and that's what we're about. I leave you with a thought that I've carried throughout most of my life that I just read to you from Philippians. The God who began a good work in you, and Johnny, it begins years ago, but also in your baptism. 
the God who began a good work in you and your baptism, will be faithful to complete that work. You don't, you don't have to worry about what God is doing. God will never let go of you. You see, God is here. He is alive. He is well right here in this church. And, and he will never let go of you because after all, God needs you to be frog kissers. God doesn't have lips that we know of. So he has to use our hands and our feet and our love. There's a wonderful story from a bishop in our church, former retired Bishop Will Williman. If you ever get to hear this man, have you ever gotten to hear him, Max? Incredible preacher, speaker, uh, just a phenomenal human being. But he tells a story about when he was pastoring a church long before he became a bishop. And he said a young man came to him in the summer. He had been off to college his freshman year, and he had come back that summer, and he had made an appointment with him, Pastor Williman. And they sat down, and the young man said, Pastor Williman, I just thought it was only fair to tell you that I won't be back in church anymore. And Williman said, well, why not? He said, well, you know, I took a lot of philosophy courses in my freshman year, and we read a lot of stuff like, you know, Karl Marx and stuff, and I, I just decided Christianity is just, it's just not something for me. And so I, I've chosen to leave the church, and Willeman smiled and said, okay, well, I'm anxious to see if you can get away with it. And the young man said, well, I can walk away anytime I want. And Willeman said, yes, you can, but here's the deal. When you were baptized, people made vows to you and your family to be there for you, to teach you, to guide you in the Christian faith. They're going to be watching you. On the street corners, at the drugstore, this is obviously a little town like Blanco, okay? They're going to be watching you. I, as your pastor, will be watching you. But here's the real kicker. God is unscrupulous when it comes to holding on to God's people. God is without scruples, sneaky, conniving, when it comes to holding on to each one of us because we belong to God. I entitled this sermon, The Times They Are Changing, and yes, they are changing greatly for me, and they're going to change for you too as the future unfolds, I have no doubt. But here's a truth you can depend on. As my dad used to say, Bev, you can take that to the bank. You ever heard that expression? You can take that to the bank. Well, you can take this to the bank. God never changes. God never changes. God's love never wavers. It never lets go because God created you and me, and we belong to this God. And by golly, God is unscrupulous when it comes to holding on to each one of us. So we don't have to worry about being frog kissers. We don't have to worry about reaching out and touching strangers and meeting them where they are and encouraging them to become all that they can be. We don't have to worry about that because God is beside us every step of the way. Change is inevitable. But the God who began a good work in you never changes, and the God who began a good work in you will be faithful to complete that good work. Thanks to Max and Mary and St. Matthew, and thanks be to God. Amen.